Welcome back to Flashing Badger Painting. My name is Mike and today I'm joined by Gordon and Fitz as today we take on the role of eldritch investigators as monsters are being spawned and our job is to send them back to the depths from whence they came. Today we are going to play Cthulhu Death May Die. Let's provide some introductions. Gordon, second time back on the channel and getting a bit of a cult following would you say? <laughs> Fresh from my win last time. My only win, but still I'm going to carry it forward today. And first time in front of the camera for Fitz, normally behind the camera looking through the slots in the cupboard as I Am <laughs> 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 I supposed to say anything? Yeah, you can say whatever you like. <laughs> Pleased to be. <meet> <laughs> Now previously on the channel, Gordon was kind enough to drop a whole bunch of minis in my lap and force me to batch paint them. I made a video about it where the goal was to show you some ideas on how to paint some good looking models, but paint them quickly so you can sit down and play games with your mates. And that's what it's about today. Gentlemen, shall we start rolling some dice? So the game that we're playing today is Cthulhu Death May Die. This is a board game that is made by Cool Mini or Not that comes with all kinds of fantastic miniatures. Now, Cool Mini or Not were kind enough to send us a copy of the board game in exchange for money. We bought the game. <laughs> this is a board game for one to five players, which means you could play this on your own and you don't have to argue with your friends. Today we're playing the role of investigators, but in every game that you play, your goal will remain the same. Disrupt the ritual and then defeat the Elder One. In this video, you'll get an idea of how to play the game, but I'm going to show you the rest of the rules as we're playing. So how about we just get started? Let's meet the investigators for today. Gordon, who are you and what do you bring to this team? Oh, well, today I'm Richard Irons from MI6 in London. Uh, background in investigating cults, which comes in very handy. Uh, Richard has a few special powers. He can uh, gain extra attacks when attacking a target in a space. He's a little bit tougher and he can move a little bit faster than other investigators. I like it. Fitz, the last time I'm going to refer to you by your real name because you are firmly in the role of... Al Capone, gangster from Chicago, Illinois. See. Um, I'm a bootlegger. A killer, a murderer. Um, I'm connected, which means I gain an extra die if there's a cultist in the same space as me. I'm a marksman, which means I can attack a target from a space away. And I've also got swiftness. When I run, I can go in an additional space. I love it. And gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to Father Luke, Padre, if you will. Now, his background is from Lismore in Ireland, but don't be fooled, he is well traveled. The, uh, church were kind enough to move me every couple of years. Now, my special abilities, I'm really good against monsters, I get some extra success on some of my roles, and I'm a little bit tougher. Our mission this evening is Season 1, Episode 3, Dance Macabre. A fancy dinner party with masked dancers and featuring exotic animals from the Orient. Oh, to be rich and pointless. But this time, a cult is in attendance, using the dance to blend in and set up for the summoning. We've got to find the sorcerers and kill them before they use the dancers as their first course. Our mission in this game is to find the sorcerer tokens and push them to the other end of the map. Then we must defeat the Elder One, and tonight we're playing up against... Cthulhu. Because now we're going to take a look at the board that's in front of us. Everything is already set up. We have the storyboard up in the top left. This will track the monsters and the doom that will befall us. We have our own individual character cards. These are going to track our stats and our abilities throughout the game. The rest of the map board is all the different individual tiles. And we have our cultists, our monsters, and the ball goers. Fun fact, ball goer is also the nickname that Fitz had during high school. Now, the last item that I have on the table is the dice tray. And I know what you're thinking, it is absolutely beautiful. This has come from a company called The Tray Tinker. I'm going to tell you more about it later because I want to see some dice rolling in it. All that's left to do is pick our first player. Somewhere buried in the rulebook it says that you pick the player who has most recently summoned their own Eldritch Horror and having to banish it to the depths of hell from which it spawned. You? How mm -hmm. recently? Yeah, at this point. Gordon's going to be first. Let's play. <sighs> Turn was, one. What I, do you got? I was told this would be fancy dress. <laughs> so I'm playing as Richard, as you can probably tell. Uh, for my first action, I'm going to take a move, which lets me move three spaces. I'm going to run very bravely forward into the ballroom. Unfortunately, this means that this monster follows me straight in. Cultist. Uh, so I'm going to use my second action to attack them. I get to roll three black and one green dice. 
Yep, so three black is the standard and you have a bonus for one green dice. So I've done three damage, which means I kill this foul cultist. Having burst into the ballroom and randomly shot a guest, I'm going to do it again. <laughs> uh, so I've rolled two successes, but also two insanity. Um, I think we all go a little bit crazy sometimes, so I'm going to keep that result. This uh, cultist dies and I boost by two insanity here. Perfect. So on your turn, you do get three actions, which you've now taken by moving in and attacking twice, disposing of two people in bathrobes. Correct. And uh, now we move on to the next phase, which is drawing a Mythos card. These are never good. This Mythos card is called The Sacrifice. Move each cultist and deep one one space towards you. Well, this is going to go quite poorly, I would have thought. Ooh, I'll bring uh, these guys to this chap as well. Then, each cultist and deep one in a space without an investigator kills a face down ball goer in their space. And very luckily, uh, we don't have any because this is in fact two spaces. Yep. It's a little bit hard to see. Perfect. Um, in fact, I spoke too soon. There's some gentlemen upstairs that I forgot about. Oh. So would you like to flip over one of those for me, please, Fitz? Hmm. So that's it. They're dead. Um, yep. So they just come over here. They go off to the side in a discard pool. And is there any more over there or is that? Yep. There's one there. Okay. Do the deep ones do it as well or just the... Just the, the deep ones, but only when there's no investigators with them. Perfect. So, uh, now we investigate or fight. Because I'm in a room with a monster, I must fight. So the monster's going to attack me. Mike, if you'd like to do the honors. Oh, I'd love to. Is it a green and a black die? It is. I have for you one tentacle. Now, it's... you can spend re-rolls in the game. Talk us through it. Uh, so, costing stress lets you re-roll dice. Yours or the enemies, sort of counterintuitively. Um, but as it is, I think there's a lot worse results than that. So I'm going to take the single insanity. Perfect. So, as you can see, as the turns roll out, you do your actions, the Mythos card comes, which allows the bad guys, I call them bad guys, they were just enjoying their own ballroom. That's true. Um, that takes place, and then we've had the Investigator fight where they've attacked you. Now we do the end of turn resolve step. We don't have anything to do at the moment, so we'll push forward. Absolutely. Mm, may Padre go next? I think so. I'm actually gonna run straight ahead, and I'm gonna join you in the ballroom. Now running through a space with the cultists, will bring him with me. So now it's the two of us plus the two of them. What could possibly go wrong? Now my bonus is I can ignore monster abilities. So I'm going to try and attack the deep one first and see if we can get rid of him. I only have the three black dice, but I do count one of the elder signs as a success if I'm lucky enough. I'm not, but I do get two successes and a terror on its own. I'm going to spend one of my rerolls because they're three health and I'm going to push my lark. Oh, mm. I think you should do it again. A roll success again. waiting in there. There is! Hey. So I have three success, but I also have a terror. So the terror moves up one, the deep one disappears, and I still have one action to come. I'm keen to get rid of the cultist because then it will allow me to search the room that I'm in hmm. because I'll have an empty room. So I'm going to try that. Ooh. It's not great. There's a lot of terror in there. I'm going to spend one more of my sanity, or my stress rather. I get the success and I take with it two terror. So, cultist disappears. The Mythos card is out next. What does fate have for me? This Mythos card is really air Awakens. Each cultist currently on a really air space moves two spaces towards you. Thankfully, we don't have any of them on the board yet. That's a win. Um, but we are going to summon cultists both the yellow gates and the blue gate, which is way up here. Let's do it. And now before Fitz's turn, I do have something else for us as well. Now, each of our characters starts with an affliction, which we've forgotten, but it doesn't matter because they only trigger when we get to our first sanity marker. Yeah, I was just about to bring that up. So here, let me... Um... Fitz can have the first one. Okay, Fitz. Have a read, and then we'll talk through what we each have. Ooh. Fitz, go for it. Well, I've uh, <coughs> picked up Kleptomania. Um, my power is there. I steal at least one item, companion, or tradable episode token from any investigator in your space to heal all of your stress. If you can't steal anything, st take two stress. Hmm. Now, I regrettably inform both of you that uh, the priest here, the man of God, has psychotic outbreaks. Brilliant. So, essentially, once I hit each of my uh, sanity trigger markers, this will take place. Move to the nearest space with at least one figure 
If your space has other figures, do not move. Then deal two wounds to all other figures in your space. Hmm. So true to its word, I have a bit of an outburst. That's reasonable. And uh, Richard the Spy has paranoia. All monsters on the board move one space towards you. Then, if there are no enemies in your space, heal all of your stress. That's not so bad. Cool. So we've had the Mythos card. Absolutely. So this one moves over to the side. You'll notice on this one there's a uh, special sim a summoning symbol. Yeah. Summoning symbol here. The summoning symbol, uh, when we collect three of those, causes the uh, Elder One to advance. But on their own, nothing happens. So bad things will happen eventually. Eventually. Ah, it's a shame. Like marriage. So rather than a fight, because no one else is in my space, other than you, uh, I will draw a discovery card. Fitz, talk me through it. So the first discovery card we've pulled out is the champagne holder. The champagne is still cold. Someone has left an unopened vial next to it. You may claim either the champagne or the vial of venom. The item of the champagne, you may discard this card to heal all your stress and discard all your ensorcelled condition cards. Or the vial of venom, when attacking, you may discard this card before rolling to gain an additional three green die. Ooh. Father's gonna treat himself to some champagne. Do I need to take stress in order for that? No, no. I just get it. Excellent. And then the resolve end of turn, which we have nothing to do this time around. No, we only got one of those summoning symbols, so nothing to do. Over to you. Right. Al. Well, Al, a bit of a gangster and kleptomaniac. It's getting a bit crowded in that ballroom, so I might uh, run upstairs and see what damage or help I can do up there. Okay. So I'll move my token in here, up the stairs, and into this first room. Now I'm in there. Um, one of my abilities is I gain an extra green die if I'm in the same space as a cultist, so I think I will attempt to kill that cultist. Go for it. So three successes and one uh, insanity there. Comfortable with that roll, or are you going to try and re-roll any? I'm happy with that roll. That kills my cultist in this Thank you. Again, not part of the ballroom festivities. He's upstairs, seemingly looking at artwork. You run up the stairs, and you've king hit him. Yeah. Pretty smooth, my character. Smooth. Yes, yes. Um, I still have one additional uh, action. turn, action in my turn, so I think I will um, interrogate my ballroom Okay. Yep, so interrogate is one of the special actions for this mission, which allows you to flip over two of the ball goers and we'll find out what happens. There's only one. So oh, is there only one? I feel like there should be more. Uh, no, because we uh, one of them was killed by a deep one just before, oh. sadly. He had mm. a good run. Mm. And that one's a dancer. Excellent. So it goes back face down. wonder what that will turn into later on. And I believe that is my actions taken care of. Okay, so you're up to the Mythos card phase, if you'll allow me. This one is called, SOUND THE ALARM! <laughs> it's where you must move all face down ball goer tokens one space towards the starting space being Ooh. where we started here. Ooh. So, I'll start with these guys here. I'll do the upstairs. Please. Anyone coming downstairs? There are. This one? There Stay you. Downstairs. That'll work. Getting crowded in the hallway. So then we turn face down any sorcerers in spaces with face down ball goers and we shuffle all ball goer tokens in those spaces. So there's no sorcerers revealed, so nothing uh, happens there. But we do have another one of these summoning symbols, mm -hmm. making two out of three. The story makes sense. Three uninvited guests have stormed the ballroom, started assaulting people, an alarm has gone off and people are running for the exit. Yep. Also, there's some sort of monster in a bathroom, but you know. I think that part. Yeah, it's true. What did they think was going to happen? There's only one consequence to trying to summon Cthulhu. Investigate or fight? Well, there's no one to fight, so I believe I'll investigate. Treat yourself. <laughs> Treat yourself. I have to socialize. I've always said, if you want to learn about a culture, spend a night drinking with it. Say, got anything to drink on you? I can claim the sword cane. If you have the flask of the champagne, you may discard one of them to claim the socialite set. Well, I don't have that, so I'll just claim my sword cane. Perfect. You have one free reroll when attacking a target in your space. Nice. So that is the investigate or fight. Resolving the end of turn. Do we have three summoning calls? We do not. We're still at two. Yeah, we're fine. We're going to be fine. Hmm. We're going to disrupt the ritual. We're going to enjoy the party. Kill an elder one. And all of us will survive. Defeat an elder one. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. 
Over to you. Hmm. My head's getting a little bit hot. Yeah, I was just going to ask you if you're starting to cook. <laughs> Excuse me one moment. Okay, my hair got slightly hot, so I've uh, changed hair in the meantime. Uh, for my first action, I'm going to interrogate two of these uh, party guys to see who they might be. So I'm going to flip over uh, that one and A little this more thematic, if you can, as you interrogate them. Sorry. Who do you work for? <laughs> Hey, oh, on, and on the plus on. side, that worked. I found one of the sorcerers here. So this this uh, token, the sorcerer, remains face up, but the uh, party goer goes back face down. Now, as my second action, I'm going to use the other um, scenario specific action, which is to usher them so I can move them up to two spaces away. So I'm going to order him to make his way towards the waterfront, which is where we want them all to end up. I love that you don't even go with him. You're just like, you're up to something. Yeah. Go to the waterfront. Well, he's just watched me um, shoot two people in his room, so I suspect he's reasonably obedient at this point. Everyone else is running for the exit. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. Uh, for my third action, um, I think I'm probably going to use the interrogate action again, just to rule out the last people in here. I love it. Uh, unexciting though it may be, and uh, we've already seen this, but... Cool. There we go. We can safely say there are no more sorcerers in this room. Let's hope they never get shuffled. I will now draw a Mythos card. This Mythos card is The Sleeper Awakens. If there are two or more relief spaces adjacent to each other, at the end of the turn advance Cthulhu sorry. At the end of the turn, advance Cthulhu on the track as if there were three tokens. So that's quite a good one to have now, because yeah, uh, we got we rid of really it on the board, so. Yeah, that would have been horrible we'll later. Put that down the bottom. So we're still only at two of those summoning signals, symbols. Mm -hmm. mm. Excellent. Uh, what comes next? Investigate or fight? Yeah, so uh, there's no one left in my room, so it's gonna be investigate. Fitz, please. The King Cobra, a hooded snake that produces a potent venom. I love that it starts by telling you what a cobra is. I know, yeah. I honestly thought you'd go down a different pathway for a joke there, but hang on. You may take two stress to claim the King Cobra. If you do not, claim the ensorcelled condition. So the King Cobra is gain a green die when attacking a monster or cultist. Mm. The ensorcelled. When you claim this card, choose a space... I'll stop your... you there. Give me the snake. Yes! <laughs> Thank you. I want you to use it like a whip with fangs on the end. Mm. You've, uh, Fitz, you've had the hood removed from your cobra, haven't you? <laughs> uh, it's now uh, your turn. Hmm. I must have used my mouth. Um, now, I want to be able to flip over more tokens to try and find these sorcerers. Correct. But I also want to cause mayhem. I will move. I'm coming back here. Everyone's running for the exit. I want to try and cut them off for the pass and then start flipping some fools, interrogate style. That's how the priest talks. Hmm. Um, Makes sense. Think that's a good idea? Absolutely. Sure, let's do it. I will flip two. Now, we haven't flipped any of these, have we? We have not. So I'm going to flip these two right here. Ooh. Yes! It's good now, flipping. I am tempted to... Send him packing. Mm. Because if I leave him there, there's a chance that everyone's going to shuffle around and I might lose him in the crowd. I, I think okay. it's a wise move. It's um, There's less bloodshed that way, which is, of course, less fun, but I think that's Let's do it. the best choice. So two movement, one into the ballroom, and second one out to this deep one who's waiting nearby. Go stand in the courtyard with a horrific monster. Yeah. Mm. So well, you could go that way. To be fair, he invited him, so... Oh, yeah. He's part of the problem. Exactly right. I've had my three actions. Mythos card. Oh no. <laughs> Spooked. Each investigator takes one stress for each animal companion they have. Well, my friendly cobra is gonna cause me a little more stress. Each investigator also loses one sanity for each ensorcelled condition they have. Thankfully, we have none of those, but we do have a third summoning symbol. It's gonna cause us some trouble at the end of turn. That'll come out in a minute, but first I'm going to investigate because there's no one left to fight me. Gorilla. Just a big gorilla. Story checks out. <laughs> you may take two stress to claim oh. the gorilla. If you do not claim, the ensorcelled condition. Mm. That's unfortunate. It now, is. The gorilla appears to have three heart. Yeah, so that's his health that I could allocate some of the wounds to. I don't suppose I'm allowed to take a stress and take a wound. Uh, I don't believe you are. No. So I miss out on the gorilla, which means I get ensorcelled. And that's a shame, because I was looking forward to rolling around with DK. 
Mm. And it says, the ensorcerer condition says, when you claim this card, choose a space with any face-up sorcerers and any face-down ball-goer tokens. Turn all tokens face-down and shuffle them. But I don't, don't think we have any. that. That's lucky. Good. Excellent. So now Let's we move see on. see what happens at the end of the turn. So the end of turn effects, we have the three summoning symbols, which means the elder one advances. <laughs> the elder one. The elder one advances. So we must put a relier token in your space. I'm afraid, Michael, that's you. He moves along his track. He also summons a cultist on each relier space. Mm. Mm. It's inconvenient. And we move the star spawn one space towards you. But it's not on the board. That's right, we summon it onto the board into the blue space. That guy looks fine. He's appeared in an upstairs study. He has. So there was a rift in someone's study and he's just emerged looking at leather bound books. Correct. Uh, and he's, he don't, I don't think he'll be happy about it, but we'll find out. Also, there's another little special bonus thing here that says, when the Elder One advances, turn face down any sorcerers and spaces with face down ball goers and shuffle them up. But again, we don't mean Lucky that Lucky we moved him. So, not so bad. Excellent. But that's a little bit ominous. Cthulhu moving his way along the board. Mm. What happens with the cards, with the symbols that we've drawn so far? So, now the entire deck actually gets reshuffled. So those cards we were so glad to see disappear, back in the deck. Mm. And that's the end of my turn, over to you. I just spawned a great monster yeah, was, and um, Cthulhu moved along a little, so, you know. It's gonna be crowded upstairs. Uh, I think I might reduce it by one. Uh, one of my special abilities is Marksman. I can attack a target from one space away. I'm going to attack this cultist. Rather unsuccessfully from the looks of it. Mm. No, nope, I'm not going to attack him again. I'm gonna move towards him. I love it. Runs I think I know what's happening. Straight into that room. Mm -hmm. And again, I'll have another attack, this time using an additional die. And with your sword cane, you have one free re-roll when attacking a target in your space. Ooh. So you may as well use your free one. Free one, which is the green. Hey. So, there two successes. Two successes. He's dead. Thank you. You take one of the horrors. What do we call those? Sanity damage? Yeah. Sanity damage, moving it along. And I believe that's the end of my turn. Okay, time for a Mythos card. They've been reshuffled. Surely there is something good here. Spooked! Ah, Sounds yeah. really familiar. <laughs> each investigator takes one stress for each animal companion they have. Well, that's me with my King Cobra friend. Uh, each investigator also loses one sanity for each ensorcelled condition they have. Mm. Michael, I think that's uh, just you. Mm. So. You have hit one of those thresholds on your insanity track. Perfect. So we'll do psychotic outbreaks first. All of a sudden, I just snapped. Move to the nearest space with at least one figure. If your space has other figures, do not move. So I'm not going anywhere. Then deal two wounds to all other figures in your space. Mm. This has actually paid off for us this time. It has. You've uh, flown into a fit of psychotic rage and uh, killed a cultist. So the portal opened, he emerged out of the depths of this city, this cult just came running out and just, yep. the priest snapped. Mm. Excellent. Next thing that happens is I get to pick one of my abilities and move it up. So I have, let's go with, gain two grand green dice when I attack monsters. Mm. Smiting awesome. evil, as it says. There is no one to fight, so I will investigate. Oh. The peacock. <laughs> A brightly coloured bird said to hypnotise onlookers. You may take two stress to claim the peacock. The peacock, you may bring one ball goer token, whether face down, dancer or sorcerer, with you when leaving a space. I think I'll go with the companion animal as the peacock. Perfect, so two stress? Um, yep. It would be stressful, steering a peacock, right? It would. In the middle of a ballroom, no yeah. less. <laughs> so it is uh, my turn again, and um, I think I've investigated thoroughly enough here. What I might do is go and face down this unspeakable terror. So I'm going to move for one action. And I'm going to attack that fiend using three dice, plus a bonus dice because he's in my space. 
two successes. I believe he has three health. He does. So uh, I don't really stress to spend. That's disappointing. Um, I think I'll just leave him with the two wounds. What does King Cobra give you? The King Cobra gives me an extra green dice, which I forgot. Oh, amazing. I've now thrown a snake at him successfully. He is dead. Thank you. Uh, for my third and final action, I'm going to usher this young man, the sorcerer, to the waterfront where he belongs. Two out of four. Uh, okay. And the one thing I forgot to do from that roll is obviously I take one more insanity, which thankfully pushes me into my little level up threshold there. So that's nice. Um, on the, the plus side, my condition means that uh, my paranoia means all monsters on the board move one space towards me. No! This isn't going to be so bad for me, but I feel like it's going to make life harder for you two. Oh. Uh, Just the monsters? monsters? Just the monsters. You're right, sorry. A cultist is not in fact a monster. Maybe Poor we life were the choices. monsters all along. That's uh. true. Maybe the real monsters are the friends we made along the way. Uh, now, that's complete. Uh, I get to choose one of my abilities to level up. And I think I'm going to choose Majesty's Secret Service. May I attack a target one space away and I get two green dice if I do. So that's, that's lovely. Now I'm going to draw a Mythos card. This is Deep One, but with an exclamation mark, so I assume it's red. Deep One! <laughs> so, the nearest Deep One moves two spaces towards me. Uh, thankfully, I vanquished the last Deep One. Uh, then it kills a face down ball guy, but of course that doesn't happen. Now on the red square we summon, you guessed it, a Deep One. Mm. It's not just a clever name. And we do have one of those summoning symbols. So we're back up to two in short order. Nah, but this game is really easy. We're going to be fine. Hmm. We'll see. What's next? Given there's no enemies in my space, I'm going to be investigating. Fitz, please do the honors. Tiger. An animal that empowers... Sorry, an animal that the emperors of the Far East would use as guardians. It probably was quite empowering as well. Hmm. Uh, you may claim two stress to claim the tiger. Uh, I have no stress capability remaining. So you do not claim the ensorcelled condition. End of turn, anything for us? End of turn, we only have two out of the three. Over to me! I'm going to use my champagne, my item. This doesn't count as one of my actions. You may discard this card to heal all of your stress, is the first part, and get rid of any of your ensorcelled condition cards. Go on. Most excellent. I'll give you those back. They can go into a discard off to the side. My first action. You kindly brought the monster towards me and I gain two green dice when I attack monsters. So we're going to have a go at the hunting horror. Ooh, not great. But I do get one success for the Elder Sign because of my arcane mastery. The hunting horror has a health of four. Ooh, okay. I'm going to risk it for the biscuit. I'm going to burn one. And I'm going to reroll this green. Oh, one success. Three wounds. Now, I'm going to go again. I feel like this is going to go poorly. Oh. Hey, well done. Got him. So, Michael, you've taken your... Three actions are complete. Yep. I'm ready for a Mythos card. Okay, your Mythos card. Hopefully, we're not going to get a summoning symbol here. Let's see. We'll be fine. We are not fine. It is more to the party. Shuffle all discarded ball goer tokens. We have two. And place them face down in the ballroom. Then move all face down ball goer tokens one space towards the ballroom. So everyone's marching in. Obviously those latecomers were pretty popular. And yours up there as well. Then we're gonna again if there's any face down sorcerers with uh, sorry, any sorcerers in the space with ball goers, they're gonna be turned face down. They're gonna be turned face down. We don't meet that condition, so we're all good. But we do have three summoning symbols. Let's remember that for the end of the turn. Perfect. Uh, investigate or fight, no one to fight me, so I'll take a card. Cook, you look like you could use something nourishing. You may claim the flask, or you may take three stress to claim the cook. Uh, you don't have three stress available. But I'm reading between the lines that the cook is actually Steven Seagal, and he's going to be the most powerful companion you can have in the game. Mm, Casey Ryback, just a cook. The very same. Mm. I don't have enough stress, so what's my other option? The flask, which is an item, you may discard this card to heal two stress and two wounds. Perfect. I'm now walking around with the blood of Christ in a flask. Not to be confused with the magnum of champagne I had earlier. No, very similar. Uh, that's the end of your turn now, so we're up to the end of turn phase. Yep. Hmm. Unfortunately, 
Uh, these three symbols are going to make Cthulhu advance along his track. Feels like it's on my turn every time. I'm yeah, so sorry. It absolutely is. I don't want to say you're dragging the team down, but. Uh... Uh, so, when that happens, we put a Relay token in a room nearest to you. Do you have any preference of the uh, rooms that connect you? All hell comes from baby's bassinets in the bassinet room, please. Okay, makes perfect sense to me. Uh, we also summon a cultist on each of those spaces, the Relay spaces. Oh, no. He's like, yeah. Yeah, he's surprised as you are that he's there. Uh, now we move the star spawn one space towards you. Ooh. Fitz, if you could take care of that, please. Yeah. Lucky there's room on the balcony for both of you. I appreciate that. Thanks. Now, uh, when the Elder One advances again, we would flip over the sorcerers, but uh, we don't have to worry about that. So it's getting along there. Remembering Cthulhu is going to appear once we hit the red zone. Uh, but when he appears, that's a good opportunity for us to um, start laying into him. Now we can only attack him if we have the four sorcerer tokens in the waterfront. Mm. We're halfway there. Someone's not pulling their weight. We'll be fine. I'm pretty sure I've done all the heavy lifting so far. Mm. Mm. Whose turn is it? Uh, it fits, it's yours. Oh, well, thank you uh, for stranding me upstairs with a uh, horrific monster. If I were to leave this room, I'd drag it with me, wouldn't I? Oh, no. Mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, there's really only one thing that I can do, and that's uh, fight. So I'll have a crack, and unfortunately, I've not got much to crack on with. So um, I do have a free reroll when attacking the target in my space. And he's seven health. Seven health. Mm. Oh, that's um, it's quite a terrible start. Mm. I will uh, do one reroll. If you get seven actions in your turn, roll. you stand a chance. Mm. Did you uh, spend the stress for that room? No, that's his free one. It's my free oh, okay. One. The sword the cane. Sword cane. Not to be confused with Michael Kane. You're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off. It was bad. I was hoping for Alfred, but here we are. Uh, that's one attack. I may as well. Master Bruce. <laughs> Come to go again. Why He's not? doing it. Oh, that's again just one success and uh, one insanity. So, and I did uh, forget to move my. I think I had an insanity on the last one. So <gasps> Oof. Um, I will do one reroll. Did not help me at all. No. I took at least one more damage. This is a bold strategy just to keep standing there and duking oh, it out know, with a tentacle monster. I'm a gangster from uh, Chicago, Illinois. I'm a dead shy. You'll be dead. Uh, that's three insanity and just the one success. <laughs> Feels like this strategy has worked poorly for you so far. What would you like to... Uh... Free reroll. Um, I do get a free reroll, which I will use one of these insanity ones for. Did not help me at all. It took uh, insanity off it. Mm. And I may uh, use one stress. Why not? To Pick a dice. Do one of the reroll. That's helped. So two successes and one uh, insanity. So that puts me out to four hits on old mate here. The star spawn. Moves me up to my first. Perfect, Talkers for it. What happens to you, you absolute klepto? Um, steal at least one item, companion, or tradable episode token from any investigator in your space to heal all of your stress. If you can't steal anything, take two. Mm. Oh. I don't have two to take. I'll give him one and then I guess I'll use a... Oh, take a wound, yeah. Take a wound. Yeah. Um, however, I have leveled up in doing so. Yes. What are you picking? Um, I believe I will... Um, I may uh, level up my swiftness, which is I have one free run action each turn. Mm. So it gives me an extra movement. Love it. Action each turn. So we've seen there that stress is only a commodity for re-rolls. But if you run out of stress and you need to take stress, well then you start taking wounds. Mm. Just like in real life. Which leaves us in a terrible position, but you know what's not terrible? Is this dice tray. Now I'd like to tell you guys about the dice tray that we're using. It's arrived this week and I absolutely love it. It's from a business called The Tinker Tray, which is a company that operates out of Melbourne in Australia and they're offering people a coupon code of BADGER10. I'll put something on the screen. But effectively, if you'd like your own custom dice tray like this, or like the one I have behind me, the great big rectangle one, you get to pick out the wood, the fabric, and even a design that goes on top of it. 
You get to email the team and send them the code of Badger10 and they'll take 10% off your order when you order one of their custom trays. And they're all handmade, I think. They are handmade. They were at PAX this year, which is where we first saw them, and I decided then that I had to have my hands on one. Or two. Awesome. Excellent. Sweet! Right, well those are my actions. <laughs> it's in the middle of your turn, <laughs> just like blah, 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 blah. No, it's um, stuck upstairs by myself in a room with a monster, and this is a Mythos card. It's just not the worst party you've ever been to. <laughs> Behemoth! I thought we were doing really well, then you ran upstairs and started fighting the star spawn on your well, own. Well, I had a very uh, intricate plan left where I would just leave and start uh, taking ball goers with me, but unfortunately, that last Cthulhu um, movement, bringing the monster closer to me, Absolutely ruining all the plans that I had. Yeah, you're just taking ball gags with you because you get to I feel like I'm going insane. Well, talking of ruining the party, I have a Mythos card for you. It's called Welcome to the Fold. Move each cultist one space towards you. So, that's good for us. It's less good for you. I believe that cultist should probably move. Not to there, but upstairs. upstairs. You're entirely right. Because that's what stairs do. Now, in each space that has at least one cultist, kill one face down ball goer. Oh. And if it was a dancer, summon a cultist in that space. Let's oh. see. I feel like some. Mm. There's one. It's gone very poorly so far. This has really gone poorly. Oh, well. mm. There's another one. Have another cultist. But this is good, it's narrowing down the ones that we need to flip over. I mean, people are dying. By right? bringing in people that want to kill us. Yeah, and people are dying. Yeah, yeah. not necessarily death of innocence. He's quite good here. But, it's um, probably a matter for the debrief. It's <laughs> it's regrettable, it's avoidable, um, but I'm not really that fussed about it. No, I'm happy to keep partying. Yeah, for the best. Uh, so, uh, we've now done that. There is no summoning symbol on this card. So again, you've contributed to our success there. Thank you, Fitz. Um, and investigate of fire. Guess what you're not doing? Investigating. Yes. What dice have we got? Uh, so the cultists are rolling two green dice each. He's not in the square with him. He's, He's not. The... This, sorry. I'm with uh, the The star spawn who's rolled three dice. And uh, he's got bonuses if he attacks near really at space. So thankfully you're not there. Um, he does have one success though. So you have to take a wound. God. That wasn't too bad. Could have been much worse. Could have been almost three times as bad. And if one of us dies before we've completed the first part of the mission of moving the sorcerer tokens, then we lose the game. Mm. 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 Really makes you think. Back to my turn. Um, so I think uh, my duty now involves clearing this ballroom, trying to get through some of it. So I'm going to uh, move. In fact, no. First, I'm going to use my new special ability to attack target one space away, where I gain two green dice. I'm going to take a pot shot at this deep one on the way out. Firing over your shoulder as you leave. That's three successes, that's enough to kill him and one insanity, and I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy to take that as a cost. So he has died. Fantastic, well done me. I'll use my next action to move in here. And finally, I'm going to interrogate some people here and see if I can find a sorcerer. I'm going to do this in a logical, methodical fashion and pick this one and this one. <laughs> I found two innocent dancers. Mm. Mm. That's the end of your action? That's the end of my turn, so, or the end of my action. So now, the Mythos card. Mm, a new one, fantastic. Crawling Horror. The nearest hunting horror moves two spaces towards you. Well, someone put paid to that hunting horror earlier. So now uh, we just summon a deep one to the red space. They keep coming out of the ocean there. And uh, blue one, we summon back one of these hunting horrors, which is good because it's one of my favorite miniatures, but uh, it's bad because it's gonna eat fits. We'll leave him upstairs, he should be fine. We do have that summoning symbol, but only one of three. So uh, now we're into the investigate or fight phase. Uh, Fitz, please thrill me with an investigation. The crystal ball. Of course they were doing a seance here. You may take two stress to claim the crystal ball. Mm, I don't have two stress, so... Well, then you may claim the ensorcelled condition. Mm, I'm already ensorcelled. Can I be double ensorcelled? Yes. Mm. Ensorcel live. Fair enough. Because I think there'll be penalties that come out for each ensorcelled card you have. Well, I wish I'd known that. Um, so I can choose uh, a space with any face-up sorcerers and face-down, but again, our good crowd management has prevented that being an issue. 
Excellent. Anything we need to resolve on the end of the turn? No, just the one out of the three so far. Not Back to me. one to uh, scream in von Kerdling's fear. It's getting crowded upstairs. Mm. There's still a whole bunch of party goers or ball goers that uh, we haven't checked. Mm. Yeah, I'll leave you with it. So my first move, <laughs> I'm going to move in here, bring in both cultists with me. It's a bold strategy. I'm tempted just to start flipping. I really want to find them. I think we do need to start flipping. Right. I'm trying to remember which ones you checked. Uh, I'm I pretty sure it was those. Oh, that, that was my recollection. So I'm going to try and bring some method back and I'm going to flip these two. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. You've contributed nothing. Now, you could do it again. Mm. Or I can fight. Do it again. Let's do it again. They'll get to fight me, but I'm pretty tough. I'm going to pick. How about these two? And then you've completed a little... Uh, Wait, which two are you saying? The uh, the one on the yeah. dais here and the one at the bottom of the stairs. Not right. that one. Oh, oh no. Hmm. Well, it's still information. It's true. That was a really boring turn. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Mythos me, please. I will. So you have a new Mythos card, which is the Hunting Horror again. Each Hunting Horror moves two spaces towards you, dealing one wound to any investigator in any space they enter. So, uh, Fitz, he's actually moving into your square there. He is. And uh, when he gets there, he's going to give you a bit of a slap. How's the structural integrity on that place? Uh, does it say that he attacks? Uh, no, it doesn't. He just has that one automatic wound. But on the plus side, we do get another hunting horror here no. in the yellow room. So, mm. that's nice. So that was the mythos. Precariously balanced. I get to investigate or fight. It will be fighting. They're attacking me. First cultist. This will be the one with his hands in the air like you just don't care. Mm. This guy. So far he has one success against me. I get one free reroll when I'm attacked. So I'll be rerolling that. Mm. Uh, still gets through. I can burn, but I'm not going to. I'm going to take the hit. Okay. And then second cultist with the book, who will now point at me with displeasure. Oof. That's bad. I will burn one to reroll. In fact, Back it up. This is my free reroll. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now I will spend to reroll. So that's fine. I'm taking one wound at the moment, which I will take. Because I will later use my item. Mm. I'm tipping I can't use it now. Uh, I believe you're in stage on your turn. Let's do it. I will use my flask. You may discard this card to heal two stress and two wounds. Back up to full health. And two stress. Excellent. Steven Seagal. Very good. If they can go in the discard for me. Throwback. Resolve, end of turn. So end of turn, we now have two of those three um, Mythos summoning symbols, but we're okay for now. I wish you the best upstairs. I feel well, like we've got a lot of monsters coming out. Can I just uh, reconfirm, if I die at this point uh, in time, we lose. We lose. Yeah. I only have two hits for death. Yeah, there's almost foolish running upstairs to fight all the monsters. I thought I was there. Well, there wasn't monsters <laughs> when I got up here, thanks to all your bad card. That's true. So, I'm going to do what any tough gangster would do in my situation, and I'm going to go out here and run the screen. Excellent. Well, that seems reasonable. So, I'm going to take my first action, which is to run from this room. You have a free, free, yeah. a free movement? A free movement. Now, obviously, just to confirm as well, whatever I run through, I bring in. Yep. Do we need to check these ball goers here before I leave the upstairs area? Uh, I would say your safety is probably more important at this stage. You yes. mean that much to us as a team. Hmm. I believe that I probably could come back, check, and then still keep running. Mm. All those monsters are still going to follow Yeah, you. do I it. Think, do it. I think it's a terrible plan. Then I shall do it. So I will use my first action to run into here. I will use my second action to check how many ball goes can I check? Two. Oh, that's okay. So that was his free action, and this is now the first action. So I will check this one, and Fantastic. I will check this one. No, it's a good start. So that's a good start. So I will remind you, just uh, for the purpose of the viewing audience here, that these traps have actually <laughs> have actually followed you in. So. So these ones are saying that I have kicked the field goal, and these ones are after me. He can take his wounds with him. And ball go face down. So. So you got two actions still to come. Two actions still to come. Now, I do have a peacock with me, which does say I can bring 
one ball go a token with a face down, dancer or sorcerer with me when leaving a space. Sounds like uh, you've decided what to do. I have. So I'm going to use my action. And I thought, you know what? I've been by myself too long. I've missed you guys. I've missed the party. Mm. I've mm. missed the ballroom. I'm going to go running with my sorcerer mm. into the ballroom. Right back into the crowd where he can disguise, huh? Now, do I go by myself? No, you, uh, you take all your I'll friends with you. I think, uh, I think you don't know. I thought, you know what? It's, um, the ballroom's where it's at. It is. It's getting, it's getting rather crowded. Uh, it's what one last that? action. One last action. Do I send our sorcerer to the waterfront? If we don't, I think he's getting shuffled back into the rest of the group. Uh, yeah, but I think uh, at the moment you're going to get hit by one, two, three, four, five, six different enemies. Um, I think the odds of you surviving that are fairly low at the moment. Um, I could it hit. might sound wrong, wrong, but you could rest. So after yeah, all that, that's a good point. After bolting downstairs, after bringing every possible monster and. Uh, Fiend. Fiend, evil do a doomsayer with me. Mm. So I'm going to have a sleep. I'm going to cover three. One, two, three. Okay. That'll be the end of you. <laughs> cool, so your actions are done. Let's draw a Mythos card and find out what happens. Mm. It's a deep one. The nearest deep one moves two spaces towards you. So he's, he's joined in as well. And then he kills a face down ball guy. Very convenient. That could be that one. that one. Now we summon another deep one as well. Here on the red portal. Just an endless tide coming out of the ocean there. I feel like this party's going And to it's up. the third summoning symbol there. So <laughs> investigate or fight. Ready to take some hits. Who would you like to, <laughs> would you like to start with biggest to smallest? Sure. Here he goes. The star spawn has one success. Now you have a Peacock. free reroll when attacking a target in your space. No. Does Swiftness Marksman connected? No. No. But you could choose for that hit to go to the peacock. Throw him bravely in front of yourself to sacrifice his life for your safety. Carl was a brave peacock. Oh. Laid his life down for me. You never named them. <laughs> it's true. Not when you're Not fighting. in an Eldritch Horror film. It's true. Eldritch Horror films. Sacrifice my peacock. Must be the deep one. No. Uh, the hunting horror? Yeah. Three, Three black, black dice. dice. That's two. You could... S oh, you have no stress. Um, no. Looks like your options are take two wounds. Yep. And two hits to your sanity. And does it have any sanity? Nah, the top squiggle. Oh, right. The tentacles. Now, just to, is it just me that is up for being attacked here? Or is it everyone? They're just you. Just on your turn. They're right. just attacking you. Uh, we have uh, a deep one and then four cultists. Mm, you're going to have to stop rolling like that. Yeah. I do mm. feel partially responsible. So, so it's two more hits and uh, one more sanity. Just to put it out there, if I take another hit... You've mm. doomed us. Mm. Oh! Well, there's a hit to the cultists. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. We don't, have, we don't need to have the talk just we yet. Got, we got three more to go. Let's not count our chickens. Well, Fitz... It's the end of L. That spells the end of us. I'd like you to reflect on what you've achieved here. <laughs> I don't want to say I've let the team down because uh, that would be huge. But... This is madness. We only made it this far. Yeah, <laughs> look, we got uh, we found three of the four. We only got two to the right place. Um, Fitz, do you think you'll be invited back? <laughs> <laughs> I think behind the camera is where I'm... Mm. Probably, um, probably true. Yeah. So we I have like a difficult decision to make. That something happened, something got drawn and pushed them all into me. Yes. Welcome back. You're joining us in the midst of Fitz's explanations for why he's cost us the game. And we've come to an executive decision. That decision is? We want to keep playing the game. We've got these models that we've painted. We've finally got to sit down together as a group and we want to show them off. So we're going to sprinkle on a bit of Hollywood magic and we're going to reset Fitz to full stress and full health, keep your abilities, keep your insanity, and we'll keep playing. Mm. And then if we somehow win, I'll edit out the other bit and we'll look amazing. Yep. yep. This is what um, we can't have nice. Yeah. They fought you, some stuff happened. You got better. Then, 
Resolve end of turn. Mythos cards. My goodness. This comes as a shock to me. We have three of the summoning symbols here in our arcane geometry. And as a result, Cthulhu advances. Because Cthulhu advances, we place a really it token on our space. Uh, it's going to just shuffle him behind this chap. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> um, and uh, now a, a cultist appears on each really a space. So this chap here is telling them, hey, you should, you should go this way. That's what we were lacking, was more cultists. Hmm. Uh, now we move the star spawn one space towards us. It's already there. And uh, any sorcerers in the room with face down cult, their ball goers here, oh, no. are going to all get shuffled up. So I'll take care of these. That's right, I'll do that because you're going to start your turn if you like. It's a little bit crowded in here, but I am going to start my turn by bravely attacking the star spawn, who seems to be our biggest threat at the moment. Now I get uh, three dice plus a green for my special ability, plus a green for my friend the King Cobra. So this is on the star spawn. Uh, two successes there. And um, mm, I got no rare rolls, so I'm going to take my one insanity, do two more damage to him. So we're up to six. He's almost there. If you could uh, give me a two threes, that'd be lovely. So I think following Fitz's example, I might now take a little rest. Now that that attack went so well, I'm going to go again against the same target. My second action is an attack. Wow. Wow. That's how I should have rolled before. Yes. Uh, so I've struck down the uh, star spawn here. He's dead. I'm taking one more sanity damage. And I've still got one action left. So it's my final action. Oh, that roll seemed pretty good. So I think I'm going to go for that hunting horror. Yes. See if we can do it again. Out. Look, I didn't. Um, I've let myself down and I've let the side <laughs> down. But uh, I do have two damage on him out of potential four and I've taken two more insanity which uh, you actually stop when you get to the next which uh, is thankful here. because with the hunting horror if he survives an attack he gives you an extra additional sanity mm. an extra additional that's two it is <laughs> so um, I'm on this uh, extra space here and you can probably see the logo I actually get an extra green dice for every attack from this point on so that's lovely plus I get my usual leveling up and I might um, Oh, I look quite like this. I may sneak three times per run and deal a wound to each character I pass or each um, enemy I sneak past. So that's nice. Um, but now, unfortunately, um, I've come to the Mythos phase again. Yet again, I've forgotten to shuffle because I got so overexcited about my turn. I'll stall them. So my Mythos card is... So I might duck back upstairs. Don't you dare. Play. We use you as like this invincible character. Yeah. We're like, hey guys, we'd like to play more of the game so Fitz will reset his health again as he's just <laughs> running around just hitting people. It still counts as a win, right? Yeah. yeah. Spooked! Ah! This is every time I've reshuffled, I think I've drawn this first, may speak to my shuffling abilities. Each investigator takes one stress for each animal companion they have. Ooh. Ooh. My friend the cobra has again cost me a one wound, so I can't take any more stress. And each investigator loses one sanity for each ensorcelled condition they have, of which I have two. Hmm. I feel like you're going crazy. Yeah, I don't think we use that word anymore, but... Um, Did you do your affliction? No, that was the other problem. All the monsters on the board move one space towards me. Let me affect this chap here. And the deep one. Cultists yeah. are not monsters, apparently. Um, now I investigate or fight, so I feel like a lot of people are going to hit me here. Oh, looking forward to rolling these. I feel like the game's going to be over now. No, because I've got a feeling that you'll survive. Hunting Horror, what's he roll? He rolls three black dice. And he's hit me three times. Um, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, cool, cool. It's going well. I don't um, want to think it isn't. I'm tipping you didn't have any re-rolls that you could use. Toughness, mm, you do. Yeah, re so one. I would like to re-roll that one. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. I would like Isn't to re-roll that one. <laughs> no, thanks for pointing that out. I'd like to re-roll that one. Hard okay. Game. Um, I feel like you can edit that to be a blank, so I'll just turn this over for you. No, I took three wounds. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Next is the deep one. Hmm. Hmm. Free re-roll. I get a free re-roll. Re-roll that. It's not over. Yay! Yay! Now you're just going to survive five cultists. 
Yay! I'm playing that one over there. Oh. 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 Yay! Oh. I wasn't even counting how many cultures because I didn't think you'd live. I think we've got three to go. We've got three to go as well. Ooh, oh, okay, nice. okay, okay. There's hope. I'm waiting for the double success to come out. There's one there's left. No hope. <coughs> oh, we roll. Now I don't want to put pressure on you. Michael, would you like to roll this one, please? Yes. Yay! <laughs> we actually legitimately stayed alive that time. It's amazing. Wow. What happens next? We're well, starting to feel less responsible for the situation we find ourselves. You brought them oh, right. to the ballroom. He's yeah. entirely right. Uh, so now that we've uh, done the mythos card, uh, we've investigated the fight. We now resolve our end of turn effects. We only have one of those summoning symbols, thankfully. So it's on to your turn. I want you to get excited because I'm about to clear this room. It seems unlikely. I, I would like you to go insane. I'm going. Ooh. I'm going to attack the hunting horror first. I take my three standard black dice. I take two green dice for when I attack monsters. Would you like to trade? My sword in an action, which gives me No, I don't want to burn an action, but thank you. Can I use all your actions? I only need two, I've got them. You've got four, in fact, because the Elder Sign counts yes. as success for you. Now, I won't be re-rolling any of those, so I will take the hit to my... Yes. Uh, and the Hunting Horror disappears. Boom. Next on my list is the Deep One. Uh, you have a lot. four or five successes there and one sanity. Would you like to re-roll the sanity perhaps? Or? No. So that's gone? Yep. And now, pick your favourite cultist. Well, there's only one chap here with a book and he's pointing right at you. And you're no books There's only one good book. Uh, I will pause you for a second. You're not rolling your two green for attacking monsters, are you? Oh, not for the cultist, I'm not. No. Mm. This mm. changes everything. It's just one. You need two to kill him. I'm using stress for a reroll. Mm. Mm. I think you should do it again. You reckon? No. <laughs> Neither. That's one cultist. I, no, I'm not going to. Okay. So, so I may as well wound. one wound. It was the one with the book! It was the chap with oh, the book, obviously. Geez. We had the Sorry. Sorry. That is the end of my three actions. Hmm. I'm ready for my Mythos card. Mythos card is The Sleeper Awakens. Oh, that's bad. If there are two or more really high spaces adjacent to each other, which there are, at the end of the turn, advance Cthulhu as if it were all three symbols. So that's going to fire off. In a second, but first they all get to fight me. Five cultists. We'll start with the one with the book. He's getting his revenge. Now, I get re-rolls. Toughness allows me to re-roll one, which is lucky. So... Hmm. so I will take wound? the one hit. Four more cultists to go. Oh, this is not going well. There's my free re-roll. I will now burn one of my stress. And I'll take the one hit. How many more cultists? Three more to go. That will be fine. Tell you what, I am great at rolling successes all of a sudden. Now I will burn my final stress to re-roll this success. Yep, so that one is good. Oh boy. These are only meant to be 50-50s. Yeah, I have to take That's the two. two more and I've got one more cultist. Amazing. Skinning your teeth, and that was actually wow. not done in the edit. That was a genuine result. That's brutal. Uh, I feel like we've all learned the value of resting. I want to be the last one left alive. Hmm. I should have rested instead of fighting cultists. You probably should. Yes. Yeah. I took out a couple of monsters. The mistakes have been made. So now we reach uh, the end of your turn. Yep. Um, resolve the end of turn as if we had drawn three of these Mythos cards. So uh, I might hand these to you to shuffle, please. Thank you. We I'm are on top, yeah? advancing. Cthulhu, and he moves into the red zone of the board, and that means that he appears. We summon Cthulhu into your space. Um, oh, sorry, guys. Well, he's uh, he's going to fit over here. 
against the Masters. Starsborn made some room for him. Um, and then a few other things happen. So we put a Aurelia token. Um, oh, sorry, that's at the end of his space. But each enemy in Aurelia space moves one space towards you. So all of these guys are tremendously happy to see their boss there. Um, and because he's advanced, we would shuffle up the sorcerers again, but uh, I don't think that's going to be a big issue at the moment. And um, at the end of each turn, which is now, we put a Rillier token in Cthulhu's space. And if there's one already there, do we go to the... The nearest room, yeah. There is already one in that room. Yes, sir. Oh, so we'll pop it up, yeah. Up on the barrel. Lovely. Now that Cthulhu is out, we are allowed to die and continue the game. Right. So... Uh, I have a good feeling this game will go for some time. So I will run. Yep, where are you going? I am, you know what? I need to go to the bathroom. Yes! So I will run. One, two, and three. Mm. Wow, okay. So it's quite a small tile. Let's just see Wait. if everyone fits in there. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I've taken every monster, cultist, and whatever into the bathroom. Now I'm going to try and do something a little bit sneaky. I'm going to attack one of them. Well, maybe just will be the actually, easiest to kill. Well, if I'll attack the um, hunting horror. Hunting horror. Excellent. So he needs four wounds. And you're giving us three. And but you do have a free roll. re-roll with your sword cane. So. Oi! Oh. This is incredibly skillful of you. Things are coming up, Fitz. So I guess if you bring everyone into a bathroom, <laughs> it's harder for them to find you. It's true. Not the first person I've lured into a bathroom. Uh, so you will... Killing them slowly. Oh, you, um, will, you will now be moving uh, up to the next place on the sanity track. That's right. Does that fire your effect? Now the effect I'm looking for is my connected effect, which makes lets me sneak past cultists and they never follow me. Yeah. I like that. I feel like Cthulhu will still follow you. Cthulhu will? He's not going to live long enough for it to matter. Now, but what else happens, you klepto? But the ten cultists that have, are now trapped in the bathroom... That's true. Uh, ...aren't bothering you guys. Tell us about your kleptomania so ability. So steal at least one item, companion, or tradable episode token from any investigators in your space to heal all of your stress. If you can't steal anything, take two stress. Mm. Oh, which is going to work no. out as two wounds, I'm afraid. Two isn't. wounds? That's fine. I still nice have... Game. I still have two moves. Uh, one. No, I get a free run as part of my... Oh, well done. Whatever. So... <laughs> He's bringing guys. them back. Hey, guys. <laughs> I'm coming back. <laughs> so I'm going to run back into the ballroom. I'm bringing Cthulhu with me. Okay. But I have lost all of the cultists. They're all at least. stuck in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> this is not... This is definitely not the best strategy to play this, I don't think. But I'm it's enjoying amazing. it. amazing. And what I will do... Now, should I heal or should I run upstairs with the Cthulhu? Uh, well, if you're going to run upstairs, you could have done that last time. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to heal. So I'm going to... One, two, and one. Okay. That was a pretty amazing turn. Let's get you a Mythos card. It's called The Sacrifice. Move each cultist and deep one, one space towards you. <laughs> They've just figured out what's happened. Then, each cultist and deep one in a space without an investigator kills a face down party goer. Thankfully that's not that's uh, no one. going to be anyone. Uh, did the chap up there move? He did move. Oh, fantastic. Um, there's no token on it. Fits. Best on ground at the moment. Well done. <laughs> Trying to redeem. So. Cthulhu's attack. See if you survive this. Yeah. So two black dice and two green dice? It is. So two successes. I'll take the two wins. Sure. Next to attack you is the deep one. One on one. Now he's landed a wound and at the moment, if the wound goes through, he will summon another deep one into his space. Mm. Maybe I'll uh, risk that stress for the reroll. Okay. Reroll that one. Mm. Mm. It's gone poorly. Hmm, hmm. Looks like he's uh, hit the tree, Chuck. So, there we go. He's, he's brought a friend, so his friend can stay there. Resolve end of turn. Anything for us? So at the end of turn we have nothing except the special event because Cthulhu's on the board, which is he gets a really yeah token on his space. And if we can't do it, we do it as near as possible to him. So uh, we could put it here. Yep, that'll work. Here, they're all both adjacent, so let's put it in the pond. Adjacent? Adjacent to Tatham. I'm sure you're familiar with his work. 
your turn. It is, and what a turn. So, um, I'm in a bit of a poor state, uh, thanks to... Fitz. Uh, Fitz. It's Fitz. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I'm going to use uh, a rest action to begin with. So I'm going to get to, I'm going to heal two health and one re-roll there. And now I'm going to move. And when I move, um, no, I'm actually going to search two of these party goers first. Ooh. So I'm going to do uh, these two on the end here because they're close to me and I have short arms. They both appear to be innocent party goers. Now, as my last action, I'm going to move. And thanks to my new upgrade, I may sneak three times per run and deal one wound to each enemy I sneak past. Oh. So I'm going to leave the room and I'm going to go one, <laughs> two upstairs, and I think I'm going to go three into here. And I'm going to deliver a wound to everyone here. I presume Cthulhu can't take it because he's not vulnerable yet. Yeah, but, correct. Um, one for each of them and uh, one for my friend over there, I think. Uh, so now, um, Mythos card. Starspawn. Move the Starspawn two spaces towards you, then each investigator in space loses one sanity. And if he's not there, we summon a Starspawn. And he appears this time on the red, so he's emerged from the surf. <laughs> and walks past two... What are they? Summoners? Sorcerers? Sorcerers? Yeah. He comes out of the water, walks past two sorcerers who are just like... A priest and a gangster told us to wait here. <laughs> yeah. I assume he gives them the... Yeah, traditional the half wave or head nod as he comes out. It's like as he slow bows up mm. the beach. And he'll probably say something like, I know this is like Christmas for you, but this is Tuesday for me. <laughs> something that envelopes Hatton Street fight in the movie. Mm. That's the end of the Mythos card. Uh, we now have the investigate or fight. My small friend there is gonna fight me, but I don't think it's gonna present a problem. Ah. Uh, Any you know what? I get one free reroll when attacked or rolling for fire, so I'll have you roll that one again for me. Mm. Mm. I'm, not, help. I'm Sorry, not enjoying it. Uh, I will take the wound. End of turn. That is the end of turn. We only have one summoning symbol. We're right to move on. It is uh, your turn. Excellent. Any recommendations? Do uh, we think I keep flipping tokens? I mean, we still need to find the sorcerer. Well, realistically, we need to want to start fighting for Phil. Get these sorcerers out of there. I will flip these two. They are both ball goers. Hmm. I feel like um, I feel like our plan hasn't worked perfectly here. I can't sneak past anyone, so what you could do is just flip more, yeah, to give Fitz an opportunity um, in a brave and valiant act of self-sacrifice. I also don't want to die. That's reasonable. I'm going to spend a rest and go one, two, three, in the hopes that I can survive a turn of getting smacked. Mm -hmm. Um, Are you going to use your last action? You could kill one of those deep ones. That would that would be helpful. That would reduce. Uh, that's the two less dice. Yeah, it was either that or flip more. But let's let's go after the deep one. So I get two green because he's a monster, and my three starting dice. Now they have taken a few wounds, and they're going to take a few more. That's so that is enough to five wounds. Two, three, four, five wounds, and two insanity. Wow, wait. Uh, I will take my two insanity and it will destroy one of the deep ones. They're on the same health, so either one can go. Mm -hmm. I'll take that two different things happen. First is psychotic outbreak. Move to the nearest space with at least one figure. Then deal two wounds to all other figures in your space. Hmm. That's not bad. Oh, uh, that is bad. We'll kill Fitz. I forgot about Fitz. Hmm. Do you have to move? No. No, Please. so if your space has other figures, do not move. Damn, I made that clear. <laughs> the good mm. thing is, you take a deep one with you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, he doesn't even have any um, stress left that he can... No. So, uh, Fitz. This feels like deja vu all it over does. again. It does. But I have a feeling that you won't be waiting long for the two of us to join you. Rest in like peace, Fitz. It's uh, Alcatraz for me. <laughs> you um, you burned out brightly and quickly, but you also contributed very little. <laughs> so, that's I nice. summoned Cthulhu. It's true. Not many people can say that. That's right. Um, I actually and did the exact opposite of what we said. That's now the end of... Uh, Mythos card for me. Yeah, the end of your phase. Let's look at that. 
Hunting Horror. Each Hunting Horror moves two spaces towards you, dealing one wound to any investigators in the spaces they enter. There isn't one on the board, so we are going to summon one here at the yellow. In the bathroom again. It's come up through the U-bend. You, bud. You. <laughs> now, I'm going to be attacked by the great man himself. Uh, right, so that's um, two black, two green. Ooh, that feels like a lot of damage. I'm in trouble. That's I have a free reroll, so let's use that first. I'll use this one. Nope. <laughs> no. That's not helping When making, no, I'm one, in two, three, so four. much trouble. Hmm. One, two, three, four. Dong! Padre Filio Spirito Santo. Deo gracia. Um, um, my final words were something about Al Capone. It's all his fault. It's true. It's my turn. We have one last player in the game. I do. I feel like I can pull this one out of the bag. I think I've got this all sewn up. So uh, my first action on my turn is going to be to uh, kill that small insignificant man. Excellent. To fight him. Obviously, we don't encourage violence here. Uh, you, there's your starting dice. What else do you? Uh, have? I'll sort of throw an old game. One more, please. Yep, so that's the one for your ability up the very top. That's correct. Anything else? Uh, I'm also going to gain one uh, from the King Cobra yeah. I'm deploying as a weapon. Well, that feels terrible, but there is one success there, which is all I need. There are two insanities. Uh, you know what? I forgot my green bonus dice for um, having passed that level on my thing. Do you want to reroll the insanity? Um, look, I uh, don't nah. think I do. <laughs> I think going insane is working out for me now. So I move up to... Uh, the next level there, to insanity, which means my paranoia kicks in and all the monsters on the board are going to move one space towards me. <gasps> yes. This chap will move here, and Cthulhu will move there, and uh, the hunting horror will join his friends in the antechamber. <laughs> um, my second action will be to move ever so sneakily into this room. And my final action will be to interrogate these Ooh. two. You've got this. You can do this, You Gordon. can do this. We believe in you. Hmm. No, I feel, I feel, I feel like this is all ready to fall my way. So that were your three actions? Yeah, so I'll draw a Mythos card here. It, uh, spooked! Each investigator takes one stress for each animal companion they have, which I have one, I'll take the stress. And, uh, I lose one sanity for each and sorcerer, which is two more. It's, um, another three summoning symbols there. You get um, to investigate first. Oh, you're right. Um, that's wonderful. So Fitz, can I please have one of those? Monkey. If you could just read the card and sure. not insult the man, that'd be fine. Highly trained, you think? Monkeys you don't take, wear bow ties, my friend. You may friend. take two stress to claim the monkey. I don't think you. I have don't have stress. the capacity to. Uh, so you can claim the ensorcelled. Thank you. I'm studying a collection, and it's going very well so far. Um, look, it's not. It's not going great. End of turn. End of turn. So uh, I'll get someone to reshuffle these for me. Please. We are advancing for the long track, but when there is an advancement and we are uh, already there, what do we do instead? That's a very good question. Does it tell us? Give you hand me that rule. Oh, the token goes to where Cthulhu was. Oh yeah, that's right. And then it moves. That's correct. So, because Cthulhu is already on the board and we've still advanced the track, this uh, token takes its place, moves along to the next space there. Um, if it gets to the end, that's uh, the apocalypse which is um, not great. Uh, mm. I was hoping that's what brought us back into the game. No. It's not the apocalypse now. No. Still have more. No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I see what you've done. This is why um, I died early. Francis Ford Coppola is turning in his grave, <laughs> especially given that he's still alive. Is it your turn again? It is. For some reason I found myself alone here. <laughs> so I'm going to direct this young man uh, to go towards the waterfront. So he's going to take his two moves. And, um, hmm. A little bit of a, a little bit of a conundrum <laughs> here. As you look down the stairs, a Cthulhu waiting for you. What I'm going to do is move down here. Use my little sneaky ability to sneak straight past Cthulhu, and uh, end up in the room here. So I'm going to check. I'm going to direct this yeah. guy, and he's going to go to the waterfront. I feel like you're so close there. Yeah, look, you've I got have. This. Um, do I have one action left? No. No, you don't. No, I directed him down, I ran after him. So I just have to hope that other things are not drawn into my space. I think I'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what happens. So uh, I'm going to pull a Mythos card here. Sneak, Look, sneak I'm going to put past. that one back. Um, <laughs> I'm not really thrilled with how it went. So this is the Starspawn card. 
Star spawns on the board, each investigating its space loses two sanity. That's okay. Then it moves two spaces towards you. That isn't okay. So he's uh, going to be standing here. And uh, on the blue, we summon a star spawn, but we don't have any left. So. Um, um, no, it was only if he was in my space. Uh -huh. yep. So um, he's not going to attack me. Uh, that's only one success, and I get to re-roll one for free. So I'll, um, I'll have you re-roll this one, please. Hmm. hmm. I've already forgotten what that was. That's okay. It wasn't something harmful. It was an elder sign, I believe. Uh, so I'm going to take that one wound and count my blessings. And a tentacle. Uh, and take my uh, one tentacle, which is again going to push me up to paranoia. That's going to make every monster on the board move one space towards me. So that's probably not the ideal outcome. Uh, but thankfully they're not going to attack this turn. And if there are no enemies in my space, heal all of your stress. I think we can say I don't meet that condition. Um, that's okay. This is still going well. This is all in accordance <laughs> with my plan. Okay, so I'm going to need four successes here. Wow. That's, uh, nice. that's six successes. So, where were these rolls earlier? <laughs> I will put to you that uh, what's happened here is Cthulhu's stage two, let's hold this here so the camera can see nice and clearly, his stage two has been defeated. Now, what's meant to happen in the game is then that reveals stage three, which then reveals the final stage. <laughs> but I think in the spirit of the game that we've had here, where if we cast our minds back, we've actually already lost. Yes. I think what we'll do is claim this as a moral victory at this point. And, uh, and say, uh, I'll vote for myself for most valuable player. Uh, Fitz, who do you vote for? Uh, not myself. Um, considering I died once, had to be reborn, um, brought every single possible monster onto the board I could, and then died cheaply again. I may vote for you as well. <laughs> Brilliant. Cthulhu has my vote, but I also love the concept of about a dozen cultures getting locked in a bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, look, I think... I this was a magnificent piece of play. <laughs> this was my favourite move of the day. Uh, my play involved a lot of scurrying and hiding. It wasn't the bravest, but it was effective. Now, I knew this game was tough, but that was really difficult. That's so hard. I feel like having three players contributing to the win might help, as opposed to one who appeared to be playing for the cultists. <laughs> Any response? Yeah. <laughs> it did appear to be playing for the cultists. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> What? Thank you both so much for whatever that was. Um, well, what it's have so we important. learned? I think it's really important to take learnings away from these things. Okay. Um, I have nothing positive to say. No. I've learned that wigs are rather hot and moustaches don't adhere quite as well as you think they might. I've learned that uh, when you run off by yourself upstairs to the bedrooms and find yourself locked in there with a monster, hiding in the toilet is sometimes quite an effective strategy. I think there's a lesson in that for all of us. For me, I absolutely love painting, but I really enjoyed the opportunity that this was only half a day's painting of the models, and then we got to sit down with some painted minis and play a ball game, and I think they look pretty cool. Um, it's definitely not the most complex game, but it's like thematic, it's fun, and really like this, this painting has brought it to life. So thank you. I'll bring you the rest of the set over to finish up. Um, I actually want to play this again now, taking the learnings from the last one and sticking together perhaps a little No, bit. we're selling the game. <laughs> so, um, You're not invited back. No, I'm going to back. <laughs> so on the next time we play this, Fitz won't be here. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching another one of our videos. This has been something different, but I found it really entertaining. If you got a kick out of it, let us know what you enjoy and if you'd like to see us play another board game rather than just painting tutorials each time. Thanks again to the tray tinker. The dice trays are amazing. If you'd like to get a hold of yours, remember use the code BADGER10 when you email them about getting your own custom tray. Final thoughts, guys? Gordon first. Uh, the sound of the dice in that tray was uh, fantastic fun. But uh, really, I think I carried the day. And um, it's becoming a bit of a theme in your bat rep sort of uh, play videos that uh, I emerge the victor. So let's keep that up. There'll be a very friendly edit for you that puts all the blame onto Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you very much. Like, once again, I do like these. Uh, I love these trays, especially even just the displays as well. And um, I think as a game player here, I make a very good cameraman, so I may head back that way. That's true. Um, thanks again for painting uh, what are genuinely my miniatures. I really appreciate it. Because uh, I never would have painted these, and this video would have sucked with grey plastic. Meh. <laughs>
Well, as Father Luke would say, consider the holy trinity of liking, subscribing, and commenting. It really does help out, and we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Uh, is merch available yet for the uh, channel as modeled by Fitz here? Oh, how good is that shirt? We had a couple of these made for PAX, which was the Penny Arcade Expo. One day we will have a merch. All we need is some people to watch the channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Ended on that. Cool. Days to send them back to the depths from whence they came. Join us today as we play Cthulhu's Death May Die. I'll do one you more. You said Cthulhu's. <laughs> what is it called? Cthulhu. <laughs> you were like, Cthulhu's <laughs> Death May Die. <laughs> And I'm also joined by Fitz, first time on the camera, usually standing behind it, watching me creepily from the shadows. Pleased to be. You can't just say the same thing I said. It's, I said that. Do you want me to give you one more? One more, yes, one more. Please. Faster paint. I'll add a link for that shortly, but... <laughs> Fucking moth. Yes, just I saw flew it. Up. And I was like, don't look at it. I did put all you the should, lumens on. Yeah. You should have done this one. Alright, this is... is yeah, because they're not going to see my legs at any point. No, but under your shorts. Oh no, they're just my jocks. I oh. wear like nine inch trunks. <laughs> can hold half his Our mission in this game is to find the four cultist tiles that are hidden amongst the ball goers and move them to the other end of the map. That was pretty good. That was good. Can we say cultist tokens? You said cultist tiles. Yeah. I just say tiles. You said cultist tiles. Why am I so dumb? I don't know, I don't love it. Um, and aren't they... Are they sorcerer tiles? Yeah. Because these are cultists. I'm yeah. just thinking of a disambiguation. Sorcerer tiles. Ready? Say disambiguation. Sorcerer tokens? Sorcerer tokens. Sorcerer tokens. Hang on. Ah. Right, sorry. No, thanks. Thanks for stopping that. That's good. <clears throat> Let's take it. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Jesus. <laughs> he's just in the first. He does something sorry. every time. It's like he's like resets. <laughs> he's not even the one talking. He's like, I've got to reset. Yeah. Hang. Hang. Ready? All of the above. Now as we start the game, all we need left... All that's left? All that's left. All, all we need to do. You're, you're, you're <laughs> gonna, you're you have to pick one. <laughs> I don't care which one, but one of them. Excuse me? <laughs> can't believe you didn't dress up your piece of <laughs> shit. Oh, okay. I thought you had reset and you were waiting to start again. No, press record. That's better. That was a good one. That was a good one. Go. I like you saying that my minis were all painted. Maybe we'll just do a couple of minutes of that. Just okay. you saying how much you like me. Is the camera wrong? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, won't, I, won't, I won't say it now then. <laughs>